Wilson pick it, you know, uh, Funky Broadway. There's so much great music. I, uh, I really, really dove into soul music, and that's kind of where I found my happy my happy place, you know. In my 20s, I started getting into soul music, and, and by then I was playing a lot of blues, a lot, a lot of blues, and um, I don't look down my nose at blues. In fact, I love the blue, the, I love playing blues, and I love blues musicians. <laughs> it's my life. I spent more time doing $100 blues gigs than I've done any, than anything else, and it's, it's where it's at for me. I think that it's a dynamite style for any musician to embrace because the thing about playing blues is, it's not, first of all, here's a quick blues lesson, it's not. That doesn't define blues. That's a kind of blues, that's one type of blues feel. There's about 80 of them, okay? There's all different kinds of shuffles. There's a swing shuffle. A jump. Mimicking the string bass. Okay. Then you've got um, box shuffles. Chicago. Then you got the Texas thing. The grinder. We call it a grinder. <laughs> or a flat tire. Patoom, 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 patoom. A lot of them got names that sound like they are the doodle wop. The rumbas. There's all different ones. Oh, the stroll. Has anybody ever heard of the stroll groove? Ike Willis. The famous Ike Willis. Well, you gotta check out Ike Willis because he invented the stroll groove. That's this one. This is from the 50s when it's, music was so cool in the 50s because it was all brand new. It was all these electric guitars and stuff, they were brand new. They were just coming on the scene. And the people that were playing them might as well have been Marilyn Manson at that time. You know what I mean? Because they were crazy playing these electric guitars coming out of the hill country. And, but back in those days, they had dances. You know, they didn't really have concerts. They had a dance, and a band played, and the, and the kids danced. And the, the bands would write songs that had a dance, a special dance to them. And this one, the stroll, is the one that all the guys and the girls would be looking forward to because that was the slow dance. Get a little bit closer, you know what I'm saying? You know, these days they got some kind of booty dances and stuff going on or whatever. But, um, you know, times change. Back in the 50s, they were writing some really hip stuff, and they were writing it on instruments that were brand new. So rhythm and blues, you know, I, I always encourage musicians to dive into rhythm and blues, and not just dive into it, embrace it. Because there's, there's so much um, to be gained from... Uh, um, there's so much to be gained from embracing uh, discipline and embracing simplicity. Because um, the true master musicians have the ability to play what the song calls for, even if it requires complete simplicity. If that's the best thing for the song, they have the ability to do that. But not just do it. Do it with a happy heart. You know what I mean? It's not like uh, bass players. I, I do this at every clinic I do. I, I try and do this um, imp impression. And this is what, you know, sometimes you see a bass player. I'll go to a concert. I'll see a bass player up on the stage or at a bar or wherever, and they'll be like this. Oh God, 
Woe is me, I picked bass, it sucks. <laughs> so boring. Ugh. You know, they're putting out this energy like it's some sort of punishment to play a, a disciplined, a really good disciplined groove. I don't look at it like that. I say, I got this, I'm nailing this groove. You know what I'm saying? I address the audience, make eye contact with them and the other musicians and let them know I'm the bass player and I got this. I am holding this down and I'm happy to do it like this. Those are the guys that, and ladies that work like crazy. You see what I'm saying? The guy who's sitting there stewing, who's sitting, or the lady who's sitting there, you know, they just can't wait to get theirs and, you know, I want to play now, I want to play now. You know, um, like, a, like a child having a temper tantrum. You know what I mean? Those people don't fit in. They don't fit into a musical environment. It's a team sport, you know what I'm saying? You have to, and particularly for the bass player and the drummer, you gotta be able to hold it down and be willing to play them pocket grooves and, and be willing to do it with a happy heart. Embrace the simplicity. Embrace the discipline. If you can do that, if we can do that, then we can succeed in the long term playing music. Because 90%, more than 90% of popular music styles require discipline, a lot of it. You know, and all these great musicians that I've, been, I've had the opportunity to hang around with, whenever I see them play, I listen close and see what they do, and they always have the ability to lock in rhythmically, and you never, you never see them making a fool of themselves musically, you know? I think that's the sign of a of a, of, a, um, of a green musician or something like that is when they feel like they really gotta do too much all the time. You know, we gotta pick our places. Now, that's not to say that we can't have an individual voice, we can't be aggressive, we can't play with fire. It's not to say we can't be uh, busy in our playing as long as we pick our places. You see what I'm saying? It has to make sense and be tasteful. It has to have musical context to the type of music that we're playing. You see what I'm saying? It has to fit with the song that we're playing. There's nothing wrong with being aggressive, slapping the hell out of the bass, or doing two-handed tapping, or you know, learning eruption on bass, or whatever. It, if you can do it, and you can find a way to fit it in in a tasteful, musical way, then it's cool. But if you do it in the wrong place, you're a jive turkey instantly. You see what I'm saying? That's what it's all about, is finding where and when 